But I got to ask you about this bill that came up on the assembly floor. You've been talking, well, for years now about Common Core and how the state is handling uh, all this uh, new testing that's going on. Uh, that does two things, supposedly. It tests the students as to their knowledge and where they are great appropriately, but also some of the standardized testing has been designed to evaluate the teachers, those that teach the children. Mm -hmm. You've had some issues with that. A new bill came up on the Assembly floor. Let's talk about it. Well, it's not me just having issues or many of my colleagues having issues. It's the constituents we represent. It's the parents. And it's a, an extremely important issue. You do all the polls. We've got to deal with ethics here. We've got to deal with the economy, highest middle class property taxes in the nation. And we have legislation to try to deal with that and bring our friends from downstate kicking and screaming. Now, I know they like rent control, but we have a problem upstate state with uh, creating jobs and uh, our property taxes, a, a big issue. But education is right up there at the top. And they've been telling us in their government for three or four years now, listen to us. We want to have a voice. We're looking at these tests for our kids. They're being overutilized too many hours. They're not uh, uh, comprehensively appropriate for the age groups. Uh, you're using them to uh, evaluate teachers, and that's inappropriate. We can talk more about that and a whole variety of different issues. And the other thing is standardized tests, because I'm one of the few people who is an educator here, we're not supposed to be utilized to stigmatize kids or educators. They're to be used as a diagnostic tool to help teachers and educators and schools and parents move kids forward in the challenges they face where they need uh, some rehab on, on the issues uh, which can be shown on these tests. That doesn't take place because they don't get the questions. It's secret. They, they can't see the test themselves. So how can you use them as a diagnostic tool? Now the problem is my colleagues failed miserably on these two issues. And this year, the parents said, you didn't want to listen to us. This is a representative democracy. We told you what needs to happen here. We're going to opt our kids out. 200,000 or close to 200,000 parents, civil disobedience, told them, you're not listening. We want to have a voice. These are the problems. I brought these problems to my constituents. I brought them to the ones that don't know and are didn't opt out their kids, uh, and, and we finally got the message to some sense. I brought them to my colleagues. I brought them to Commissioner uh, Tish, or Regents Leader Tish in the Regents, and finally they did a piece of legislation, and they have another one pending. The first bill they, they did addresses half a loaf again. And now, the bill we sent out originally didn't address the issue of how to evaluate teachers effectively or utilize tests if, you, if you're using them all at all and didn't address the issue of these uh, overutilized, the standardized common core tests, one size fits all, coming down from uh, faceless bureaucrats from, from the clouds. Now they brought back a bill. They saw, the, finally heard the voices. 200 parents opted out. Uh, they've done basically a good portion of what I asked them to do. Number one, they're going to have an evaluation of the questions to see if they're comprehensively appropriate to the age uh, group and the grade group. That's imperative. Number two, they're talking about reducing the number of hours. Eight hours is ridiculous. The, the uh, law boards don't take eight hours, I don't think. Thirdly, they've delayed the evaluation of a teacher. That's good, but the sort of uh, Democles is hanging over their heads still. And I'll talk a little bit more about why. And fourthly, they are going to release more of the questions, more of the testing, so we can use it as a diagnostic test. Let's go back to the teacher just for a minute. Why shouldn't you use a standardized test as 50%? which now are 40 percent, which now the regents, our commissioner of education, our new commissioner, we could talk a little bit about that, but I'm not going to go there, uh, wants to evaluate teachers on a, 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 a snapshot, a one-size-fits-all standardized test. Number one, a lot of kids freeze up on those tests. They just don't do well. You can sit them in a room when they're relaxed, not stressed out, and they can answer the questions. They can show the comprehension. Uh, number two, some kids can go in there, do great on the test. Two weeks later, uh, they forget everything they've, they've learned. They really don't have the comprehension. But here's the third thing. We have diverse, very diverse school districts. Some are high need, low wealth, very wealthy. Some are high wealth need, low need, all right? They don't need them. So we have districts of poverty. We have high wealth districts. It's no coincidence that there's a suggestion that the best teachers are at the high wealth districts and the bad teachers are at the low wealth districts because there's outside environmental issues which bring more challenges to those impoverished districts. Poverty is one, crime is another, addiction is another, uh, a lack of parenting is another, more kids with specialized needs who need uh, more special ed instruction, which is very difficult. And the questions 
I asked my colleagues, and especially the chairwoman of the education department, is how can you use one standardized test, eight hours, you know, for maybe math in English, and suggest that the challenges these educators have are different from the challenges of, of the other educators which have good parenting and better environments. The challenges are entirely different. Of course the test scores are not going to be a, a high. Listen, teachers can do a lot of things. They can do their lessons plans. They can innovate. And by the way, this takes away the innovation, these common core tests. Uh, they become stigmatized to the point where they have to teach to a test and it takes the joy out of learning for kids. But they can't parent other people's kids. All right, so when kids come to school and they're not disciplined, these are a whole different set of challenges. You can't use a, a standardized test to correlate to education. All VAMs illustrate when you do that, it's not effective. So I've got a bill in that does all the things that my colleague on the other side uh, said I, I told her she should do, but also says no more than a maximum of 5%, a maximum. You really shouldn't use it at all as an evaluation of the effectiveness of teachers. But my bill says, and I have several sponsors on both sides of the aisle now, you can't use up more than 5% one of these common core or a set of common core standardized tests to evaluate the effectiveness of teachers. It just doesn't correlate when you have the diversity of challenges from one school district to another school district. We have you speaking on the bill that the uh, chair of the Assembly's Education Committee brought forth. She was not very responsive to a lot of the questions you asked that day. She didn't day. want a serious discussion, clearly. I think you could see that. And so we're going to show the part at the end of your remarks where you spoke on the bill itself and how you okay. felt about it. And we'll be back with more of today's Assembly Calendar. And to suggest that we spent six hours debating a bill not too long ago in which we did nothing to protect our educational system or our educators from the attack on them would suggest that every school and every kid learns the same way, one size fits all, and no matter where you teach a school, uh, a sco school or teach a, a class, whether you're an arts teacher, a BOCES teacher, a special education teacher, whether you're in a district that has a lot of poverty or a high wealth district, there's one test that fits everybody. And when they take that test, they're going to use that test to evaluate their teachers potentially up to 50% for their effectiveness. Now, that's totally inappropriate. This bill is silent on that. We were silent on it when we did the, the education bill. That's why many of us in this room voted against that. And uh, I think there's a guillotine hanging over the educators across this state. And you may have given them another year before that guillotine comes down and chops their head off but you're not being fair with them. There should be a limit on how much you can use a standardized test, whether it's a common core test or any standardized test to evaluate an educator in the state of New York. And it probably should be 5% or less. It shouldn't even be 15%. And it certainly shouldn't be 50%. So uh, I'm gonna support this bill because uh, Ms. Nolan, Assemblywoman Nolan, has done some very good things in, in, in this bill. Now, yeah, that's the 5% I was talking about. Right. Now, she's going to bring out another bill, which is my bill, put in five weeks ahead of her, which protects parents so they can opt out without penalty of the kids, the educators, and the school I itself. But again, half a loaf because in the bill it doesn't notify the parents of their rights. We have the bill that does all that and notifies the parents so they can make informed decisions. This is the problem. Are they just trying to protect their butts? as we say, or are they really trying to help the education process? We'll see in the future. And we'll uh, wait to hear and see the progress of your bill or the bill that she takes from your bill and makes it her bill yeah. and see if there's any changes. There's, what, three weeks to go in this three legislative Three weeks to session. go. We've got a lot to do. Make right. it right.